Game over. You may have been lucky enough in the past to own a Game Boy Advance. And if you did, you might have had the slim chance of playing the masterpiece that is The Incredibles Game Boy Advance Edition. In this 8 hour video, we are going to discuss what makes The Incredibles on the Game Boy Advance a submersive work of art. Part 1. Elastigirl's Absolute Dump Truck. I did play this game, and I wanted to relive this golden age, but Game Boys are pretty expensive nowadays. So, my plan for this project is to build an Android-based emulation device, which is generic enough to play the Game Boy games, but also play some other popular consoles I've been itching to play. Now, I want this project to actually get finished, unlike a lot of my others, so I'm going with as many off-the-shelf parts as possible. And yes, using off-the-shelf parts will mean I lose some of my creative freedom, but at the same time I'll be saving a lot of time, which really helps me focus on different areas of the project. I'll be using a DualShock ripoff as the controller, an Orange Pi 4G IoT as the brain, because it comes with a screen and Android pre-installed, and finally just a stock standard power bank as the battery. Now, I really wanted to be special by not using a Raspberry Pi running emulation station like 90% of the other DIY portables out there. So instead, I thought I'd use the Orange Pi. And holy crap, don't be like, have a quick look at this for a second. Take a wild guess what these solder pads do. Three, two, one. No, it's a five volt output. Seems safe. Okay, round two. Take a wild guess what these pads do. Here's even a little hint from the official manual. Three, two, one. No, it does nothing. And this isn't even a faulty device. I have three of these things that I've tested on. The Orange Pi is a cool little device, but just be wary, it's not quite as well-rounded as the Raspberry Pi, and certainly not as user-friendly. Which, to be fair, can be expected, as the Raspberry Pi is a lot more embedded in the education world, where this device feels like more of a DIY, hobbyist, hacker-type device. Anyway, more of the story is don't assume until you test, or in my case, don't model, print, and paint a case until you test. Speaking of cases, of course this will be 3D printed. We don't build things out of cardboard here. I'm going for as simple as possible in this project, so no hinges or moving parts, just a fat slab of Game Boy. Unfortunately, this does end up giving it a bit of a wide boy look, but I like it. <clears throat> I modeled this in Fusion 360, Tinkercad's big brother, and I tried to optimize for 3D printing, so it came out as three main parts. Two back pieces, which get glued together, and then the cover, which is screwed on. So, for the first time, one of my projects is actually serviceable. Here's a quick tip. Fill the seams in your prints with some flour and super glue, or any kind of fine white powder, not that kind, then give it a good sanding. This makes the finish look a lot more uniform. Once it's painted, you can barely tell the two back parts weren't printed as one. The printing and finishing ended up taking about 8 hours total, and then I started positioning everything inside the casing. Now, because everything is pretty much off the shelf, there isn't a lot of coding or modifying needed. The fake DualShock controller plugs right into the Orange Pi's USB port, the power bank gets plugged into the charging port of the Orange Pi, and the screen gets plugged into the ribbon cable. Everything is nice and simple. I did make sure to get a power bank that could output power while charging. Some of the cheaper power banks I've used cut the outputs while charging. This would mean waiting 3 or 4 hours in between play sessions. All that's left to do is to remove the connectors and solder everything for a more permanent and stable connection. I've added a switch I stole from an RC car in between the battery output and the Orange Pi input for turning off and on the system after a soft power down. Friendly reminder, lithium is lithium, so don't annoy it too much. I've noticed that power banks are getting a bit harder to take apart. They've added double-sided tape everywhere, so if you take one of these apart, really take your time with the lithium cell. Don't poke or prod it. Now, with assembly, I've taken special care to not fall into my pattern of gluing everything together. Things break, especially DIY projects, so make sure you have a way to fix them. I'm using double-sided tape to stick my screen down. This tape is strong enough to keep it from falling off, but it's also removable with some alcohol if I need to replace the screen in the future. Same with the battery, and if it's good enough for every single phone manufacturer, it's good enough for me. I pretty much soldered everything together except for the USB gamepad. I built a connector for this because the PCB is mounted in the top of the case, and thus would need to be unplugged whenever the device is open. This also gives me the option to design different faceplates with different USB devices in them. Like, if we wanted to build a new faceplate with a mini USB keyboard in it, we could just unscrew the game console faceplate, 
put in the mini keyboard faceplate and suddenly this device goes from being a portable console to being a portable PC. Anyway, with everything secured, I can screw on the faceplate with four screws that I soldered from the gamepad that we took apart earlier. Now, this thing does run Android, which is actually quite nice. Getting software loaded onto this thing is as easy as downloading and installing an APK through the GUI. No need for any kind of console or anything like that. The core of this project is an app called RetroArch, which is a front end for emulators. Basically, you can download the source code for an emulator right into your RetroArch app and then launch pretty much any game from it. I've also installed Dig, which is a front end for RetroArch's front end. Dig is a little bit more basic. What it does is it scans your game folder, detects any ROMs, and then automatically puts them into the correct game system folder, as well as doing some nice quality of life improvements, like downloading the game cover art, reviews, and the description of the game. You can launch the game from Dig, which then launches the game's emulator on RetroArch. Dig just makes things a bit more user-friendly. I installed a few other apps like Nova, which lets me reskin Android and change the layout of all my apps, and another app called Force Rotation, which lets me force Android into landscape mode whenever it boots up. I've also installed Steam Link, and I'm happy to say it actually works really well streaming from my PC. Steam Link picks up the DualShock controller without any issues, and it plays most of the games I've tried with it so far, even though my router is a bit on the slower side. And with all of that finished, let me show you its features. I've got the Orange Pie's original ports coming out of the back for easy access. The SD card is accessible via the back for adding more <clears throat> legal homebrew games. And I've put nice covers on the thumbsticks that match the theme of the device. And I even painted the buttons to also match the theme. I used a very strong sealant and finish to ensure that the paint does not rub off while being used. While designing this, I've also planned a few extras and add-ons. As an example, I'm planning on making a docking system of sorts similar to the switches, which will dock into the HDMI for video and the barrel jack for power. I'm just trying to figure out what the controller and dock would look like. I've also planned a battery extender. On the back here, I've included this railing of sorts. The plan is to make a battery pack that can slide into this railing and then plug into the USB charger. So when the battery gets too low, I can just slide in the battery extender and extend the battery life. The last big add-on I'm planning is a hot swappable faceplate with different USB devices. Like we discussed, the current faceplate is a USB controller. I'd love to design a new faceplate with like a mini USB keyboard in it so that I can swap the controller off and put the keyboard in. The rest are pretty small extras I'm wanting to add, like a glass screen protector and laser engraving the button faces back onto the button. But in the meantime, this project does a fabulous job of playing a lot of these older consoles, and with a 4-5 to five hour battery life, I'm pretty happy with it. I had hoped to play more recent consoles, like the GameCube or PS2, but it's pushing the hardware a little bit too far. I also wish the speaker had worked out. I could have of course added an amp to the AUX outputs, but I felt that using headphones was fine and it kind of fits with the rest of my projects. What do you think of the project? Which one of the planned add-ons do you think would work out the best? Let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching. And so, after two weeks of work, it is finally finished. Plays games quite well.